Yes, good morning, Nigerians. Good morning, beautiful viewers out there. We are still on that your program of choice. This morning on ITV, and you know ITV is certainly the best. We have arrived at that discourse segment of this program on nationalism and you. Nationalism and you. The spirit of Mother Nigeria beckoning on all of us to participate in the process of nation building. This morning is a beautiful morning and you know it is the fifth day of August 2021. We will be taking a look at yet another perspective of restructuring, engaging the specific. Restructuring, engaging the specific. And with me to discuss this this morning, we are having in the studio a retired military general, Major General Henry Ayoola. He is the president of Restructure Actualization Movement. General you are welcome to our studio thank you very much good morning viewers and now i say to you general henry ayola nationalism and you yes it is my duty civic and patriotic duty to work to build my nation thank you very much and you must remember that to be a general retire they say a general is always a general he, he must have paid his due in nation building, in protecting territorial integrity and all of that. So you at home washing at us, washing us from home, do the same. Put your right hand on your chest and say to yourself, it is your civic duty and right to build this nation. For as you lay your mat, so you lie on it. Coming to the program of today restructuring engaging the specific tell us about more about yourself and your organization thank you very much uh well i started my military career as a boy soldier from the nigeria military school zaria i was in the early 70s and uh, from there i proceeded to the nigerian defense academy uh, as a member of the 25th regular course um, and of course, uh, at the end of my training, I was uh, posted to the Corps of Signals, the, the elite, proud elite Corps of Signals. And uh, that provided me the opportunity not only to train uh, for combat, but also to improve my educational uh, background. Uh, so I had the opportunity of uh, uh, doing a degree in electrical and electronic engineering from the University of Ife, then Great Ife, now Obafemi Aulo University, OEU. And uh, of course, I had other opportunities to do further masters in three different other areas, you know. And uh, in, in the military, you really have uh, an ample opportunity to improve yourself as much as you desire. So how did you arrive as a restructuring advocate? Yes. That's a good place to start. Uh, of course, judging from my background, uh, the issue of patriotism and uh, love for the nation have been more or less ingrained into our DNA, as it were. Uh, um, you know, for us, it's, uh, it's, it's a mission, it's a God-given duty that for a nation that are given so much to us, you know, right from childhood, I mean, it's a set of us, like my set and generation of officers who went through these channels, uh, we have that eternal depth, a sense of eternal indebtedness to the nation. Mm, I love and that. so for us to see the state of the nation as it is and just sit by and watch is, is unthinkable. It's not to be contemplated. So this part of what triggered 
you know, that patriotic zest in us that at the end of the 2019 ele general elections, uh, a number of us, you know, not only people with military background, most of course are not even with military background, but of course there are other Nigerians too who are genuinely concerned about the state of the nation. So we, we did a kind of post-mortem, an after-action review of the elections and then the state of the nation. And uh, we, we looked at a number of parameters and, you know, this year, of course, it's multi-dimensional, multi-pronged. And we looked at all the issues, looked at, you know, some of the previous efforts to rebuild the nation. We looked at the 1994-95 uh, Constitutional Conference. We looked at the 2005 Political Reform Conference. We looked at the 2014 National Conference. We looked at the uh, APC Committee, the report of the APC Committee on uh, True Federalism, headed by uh, His Excellency, uh, His Excellency Co Governor Erifai. We, we put all of those together, and we saw fantastic recommendations in some of these reports. Uh, it became clear to us that the, the, the simple, one simple, square and simple solution to dealing with a whole lot of our national issues, we'd be restructuring. You know, and so we, you know, about the third quarter of 2019, we came up with this idea. And of course, when, when we started our issue, <laughs> it was sounding anathema to some people to say, what are you guys talking about? You know, but thank God today, many people have come to our page. Uh, I remember then, you know, we, we went through a number of uh, hard time, even in selling the idea. You know, some people didn't want to hear it at all. You know, but now it's becoming fashionable. And many more people, the governors have come on board, many more people are now talking about restructuring. In fact, we are, we are now actually being skews in the, you know, in the space for restructuring. But we still remain the, you know, the, the harbingers, you know, the, 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 the people is that the, open the is, door. Is, 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 by your experience in the field as the uh, chairman of the restructure actualization movement, do you sense that all Nigerians are, that is, uh, across, now speaking across the nation, all the regions that constitute to the constituent of Nigeria, are they all pro-restructuring? Oh, very good question. Thank you so very much. Well, at the beginning, like I said, you know, like, like you said, that every truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Secondly, it is violently opposed. Thirdly, it becomes self-evident. So, so this idea too has passed through those three phases. We are now at the phase when it's becoming increasingly self-evident that this is the way to go. You know, and uh, we, in fact, from some of the reports of these conferences I mentioned, yeah. we have up to 74% consensus like the, the, the report of the APC Committee on True Federalism, that of the, of the National Conference of 2014 also. In fact, all of their decisions were taken on the premise of not less than 70% consensus. And most of them were actually got in at the level of 74% consensus and above. Uh, those are a dramatic illustration of the, the, the consensus that is already there. In fact, that is what gave the you know, origin to our name. We felt that there's already a grand swell of consensus and that we're not just simply advocating. It's not like we are begging for it. We're we are not just trying to postulate. We are saying that there's already a grand swell of consensus. And so what remains really to be done is how to actualize it. Right. So it's taken for granted that there's already a consensus. Okay. Yeah. Now, talking about engaging the specific of restructuring, what are you specifically looking at when you're talking about restructuring? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, the, the word restructuring, we don't want it to be just one of those buzzwords, you know. Uh, we, you can put it in many ways. Me coming from a military background, you can say it's a reorganization. You can say it's a revisitation to the fundamentals. You, you can call it a rejig, if you like. Or you can call it devolution of power, stru you know, structure, power, responsibility, and resources. So whatever fancy phrase or name you want to give it. But simply put, we all do that even in our individual lives. I mean, you hear people talking about you know, resolution at the beginning of every year. Before you make resolution, it means you've done some review 
of your life how did my life go in this year that is ending how do i want it to go in the new year what are the things i want to change where did i do well where did i not do well how can, how can i improve where i did well where i didn't do well how can i make a change so we do that corporate bodies do that all the time everybody does that it's simple but you know you know it's like what john benashio says that the moment you want to believe a thing you suddenly begin to see all the points against it and become blind to all the points all the points and you begin to see all the points for it and become blind to all the points against it mm -hmm. yeah, that's the way i see it. those who are, who are kicking against it or those who are still perhaps kicking against it it's not because they don't want it. it's just a choice of either to believe or to accept or not to accept it's not because they are not convinced it's not because there is a scarcity of arguments and logic to push forward to, to convince anybody you know so but it's becoming increasingly clear and many people are coming on board and we are glad at that that uh, now we are not alone in this uh, uh, pursuit you know we are a federation of 36 states plus one making 37 in the areas of the federating unit federating unit what do you expect family okay. structuring thank you very much let, let me now break it down. There, there are many ingredients and elements of restructuring. Uh, the way we like to approach it is to start from the things that are already agreed upon before we move to the things that have been preferred, as, you know, suggested and being recommended. Uh, so let, let's start from the fact that we know, and our forefathers even agreed. In fact, that was part of their motivation in asking for uh, independence for us as a nation what I will call that vision of greatness. They call it the manifest destiny. Okay? Uh, I'll call it that vision of greatness. That is to say that, look, it's self-evident also that Nigeria is a nation destined to be the pride and the consolation of Africa and the black race at large. Now, that, that itself is a takeoff point. But it's a fundamental foundation. You know, that is, it, it gives you, this, you know, the, 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 the passion to want to do something to see that vision manifest because it's not enough to have a vision if you don't pursue the vision and actualize it then there's no need to have any vision that have been issue so that's the start point and based on that looking at our nature you know the, the the constitution the configuration of the nation itself we know that it's a multinational entity and the work of crafting a nation state out of this multinational entity we have not done and that's why it keeps coming back to haunt us. That foundation, okay, if you want to be the skyscraper, you must know from the beginning. And your foundation must reflect that it's a skyscraper you are putting on that building, I mean, at that spot. But if you didn't do foundation, or you put a foundation for a bungalow, and you now want to put a skyscraper on it, you know it won't work. So we have been evading that serious work, that difficult work, that difficult decision to actually craft a nation state out of this multinational entity and so that that's a major point and so for us we feel based on that that will be the start point to first of all craft a nation state and then expose that vision and 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 and, and, and propagate it cast it communicate it ingrain it put it in our educational systems let the children you know grow up nurturing that vision seeing it and then they'll be ready of course to pursue its fulfillment and actualization and then that brings us to so what kind of system can we run know that this is the nature the configuration of the nation and that's of course part of the things that have been agreed upon also that we have to be a democratic federation taking cognizance of this multinational multicultural multi-religious nature of the nation which it has to be a democratic federation and that, that also uh, our forefathers agreed on and that's why we've been running what we've been running now that, that's the start point so the next question would be so what then will be the federating units yes okay and again based on all of these reports and some of the work we have done both in engaging in consultation in in doing you know meetings town hall meetings conferences summits that we, we had our national conference 25th of february this year in abuja here you know in the married house and it was terrible i mean well attended wonderful and uh, again it encouraged us because when we saw the caliber of persons 
that joined that conference some spoke the actually the other ones the the senior people who you know citizens they spoke by zoom and all of that and it, it was quite encouraging so that that's that that the the federating units of course that's where we have to agree what we have done as a movement is to create a template because we are, we are not supposed to do things for the people and then just you know close it up and say this is what it is no we can't do that but we, are, we have put a template in place to facilitate the discussion the conversations okay so the next thing is what are the uh federating units and how many are they yes definitely. okay now some people have suggested in some of this report that we should use the current uh the zones the six zones we have as federating unit that's one option okay there are others who have felt that oh okay the six zones as they are configured uh, they are not they didn't take cognizance of the you know geostrategic uh, cultural differences sufficiently that we are going to have to refigure and maybe get about 12 zones that will become the federating units that is also one possibility there are some we would think that we should go back to the 12 states and use those 12 states as the federating units then the federating units can now have their own constitution creating the number of states they want the number of local governments they want you know like it was in the first republic you know so the, the federal union have the freedom to run the way they want to run you know that, that is the idea that freedom will be there they will have their own constitution and all of that then the next thing is what are the functions you want to devolve to the federating units okay we know for example that uh, right now and of course it happened before right now you have so many federal ministries but when you when we come to this restructuring You'll be having just a few, you know, defense and security agencies, uh, the issue of, uh, you know, uh, fiscal control and monetary, you know, regulations, or foreign affairs, uh, custom, immigration. Those, those central, you know, that more obviously centralized will remain. All of that will devolve to the federal units. Okay? That's one. Then, of course, when it comes to resources, we look at the 68... Uh, uh, items under the exclusive list of the current uh, uh, constitution and look at all of those resource based ones and also devolve them to the federating units. Then, of course, when it comes to uh, functions, or I've talked about functions that, that got to do with ministries, of course, things like, yeah, apart from ministries, things like uh, critical infrastructure, you know, basic access that cut across the nation, like is done in other federations of the world like trunk roads like aviation like railway you know the federal could still hold all of that you know to, so that they can facilitate but these are capital intensive uh, projects uh, that maybe the states may not be the best to handle of course so those ones should be there then of course you you come down there, there are so many issues in it that the issue of uh, local government autonomy will also come up because again it means the federal units can decide how many local if you want to have 1000 local government it's your business if you have only 10 as a federating unit or you have maybe uh, five states as a federating unit and of course you want to make your states as a kind of uh, administrative centers not uh, not executive states like we run now because part of the issue is how to reduce cost of governance i mean each state having a state assembly you know and all of that and we spend the money if if the federal union like it happened in, in the 63 to 66 where you have regional assemblies and then they cater for the states under that region instead of each state having assemblies you reduce cost of running government you know so a, a lot of these are there these are things we have put a template in place in fact the lead lecture in that summit on 25th of february covered all of this and you know we threw it out so that people at their social cultural levels can begin to work on this and come up with their preference i, I love the way you have uh, done some of the analysis of the specific but coming to stay on the on the issue of federating units have you not come across the fear that we started with three regions federating units and we moved into four region federating units mm -hmm. and from the wisdom of the past leaders be it military uh, i think military they thought some of these federating units as of that times 
were very antagonistic to one another at those period and therefore a Nigerian nation that ought to be unitedly knitted together were being uh, what do you call it torn apart by the rivalries of the supposedly powerful regions those fear mm. are they not still existing today well thank you very much well that's one uh, one perspective about what really happened uh, i mean with my military background i i've studied all the coups from the first coup of 1966 to the last one and uh, you know what coup plotters announce as a reason for taking over can it really not be altruistic i mean from all from all i mean by all intent and purposes because you just must justify why you are coming on board and you're removing the the former person so uh, how altruistic and how objective those reasons are it will be left to individual analysis and what each person knows and oftentimes even those who are part of the coup not everybody understands the reason for the coup usually there is always a click of those who are the real you know brain you know the the the, the hub of the coup the, those who actually lost the idea others are just brought on board to get the work done uh, so when everybody speaks he's speaking from it's like it's like the five uh, men, five blind men describing an elephant each person is only talking of the portion he touched but none of them saw the elephant mm -hmm. so the one that touched the tusk said, oh it's like a rope the one that touched the legs oh it's like a tree the one that touched the size ah, it's like a wall they are all right but nobody has a total picture <laughs> and that's how it's always been you see i mean i think it should be clear to us now that the first error that brought us to where we are was that first coup if those regions have been allowed to run the way they were running nigeria will not be where it is today there was nothing wrong with them there was, i mean there will always be something there's nothing perfect really we are just starting if they were allowed to run their course we would have corrected anything there was along the line and we would have been the better for it it was a westminster's uh, parliamentary system yeah uh, supposedly more cheaper than the federal uh, uh, the, the presidential American federalism and presidential that, that we system. adopted yeah. and one would have thought that one of the reasons why there is uh, so much creation of states to substitute the for, uh, the former federating unit is to take away or to guarantee what you call it political stability and to ensure nearness of governance to the people do you share this view yes you know i, I agree with you to a large extent you know the, like i said the, the the original concept of a loose federation is 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 okay it's basic okay now in, in fairness to general agree rosy particularly who who was who the, i mean the button fell on him to to pu put the nation together okay it makes uh, an immediate sense at that at the time that what was paramount at that time is to keep the nation as one so you i mean it is with benefit of hindsight now that we can make some other comments but for him on the spot at that time I mean, don't forget this way. He was the he was the GOC of the army before that coup and before he now became. Uh -huh. So he wasn't. It's not as if he was a politician. Neither was he envisaging or prepared for the the assignment that suddenly now fell on him. So of course, the, the first priority at that moment is how to keep the nation together, and hence what led to that uh, decree of uh, unification. So no, I wouldn't blame him. I mean, as a person, it was just it was the circumstance that created that necessity at the time but any i mean if you look at other nations that are federations the the issue of a strong center is not even a requirement the the loser the center is the better look when when you allow a system to run and you see the benefit in the system each person will be determined to sustain that system look at europe for example you know with the intransigence of hitler and all of that nationalism was engendered okay and everybody went that way until later by themselves they saw the need to unify europe again it, it started with you remember the eec yeah, uh, yeah, and then yeah, before yeah, it became yeah. european you know it was european economic community in fact before it was european still and something uh, you know which was the precursor 
of the European Economic Community, and then they are now going way to the European let me, Union. Let me reveal this question. Yes. Talking about federating Unit, mm. with the level of agitation that are ongoing on regional basis, and the secessionist propaganda and the rest of it, don't you think that the fear of reverting to a regional, what do you call it, a regional uh, federating unit is more pronounced than before? Very well. Which Very was the essence, at, uh, 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 which was uh, some of the reasons that were given for m making states creation the federating unit. And taking into consideration that we are copying the American federalism, uh, that's uh, presidentialism, which also uh, her, her own federating unit is uh, at the states. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's look at it this way. The, 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 the issue is, first of all, you, you cannot have a national cohesion, before, first of all, the entire having a cohesion within the components. So if we do the regional system, it builds the cohesion among the regions, either you call them regions or provinces or federating units, depending on what we want to call them eventually. Because w when those come together, then they can then come better together at the federal. Okay? That's the idea. That you cannot have a strong center without having a strong component, force components at the level of regions or federating units. And one of the you know, good things about the Federal Union, even when uh, between 63 and 66, we saw how each region was making steady progress. There was healthy competition. Each region was tapping and harnessing and honing and harmonizing its resources, developing at its own pace, encouraging you know, peak performance and, and productivity, encouraging you know, fear and, and healthy competition. All of those are basic ingredients of modernizing nations. Anything different from that, we will just be going in a rigmarole, role. And that's, that's what it's been. So most of the problems we're talking about, they've been there. It's just that they, they've been, they, they have come to a head now. That is why they are now forming basis of agitation. The tr truth is that the system we've been running has really never worked. When people talk about restoring something or re, uh, they use the word re casually, I, I always... I'm not very enthusiastic about that because as far as I'm concerned, we've really never really worked. Whatever we had against in the past were for two years. General, you know, do you, they general, were just, general, in your opinion, do we need another national conference in order to restructure Nigeria? No. I, I think we have wasted enough resources on doing conferences. All of these reports, yeah, all of these reports that I just mentioned, those are, those are four reports that are, they are there. In fact, if you look at the report of the 2014 National Conference, they also repeated, listed these previous efforts. And if you look at it, that report is about 999 pages, the one of 2014 National Conference. Okay? The one of APC Committee on True Federalism is about the, you know, it, it took cognizance of all of these previous ones too. And even compared them. In fact, the end part of his recommendation was that he did the comparative study of the, the of those previous ones with his own so these ones they are there in nigeria there's hardly anything that has not been researched into it's our political will and strategic pursuit to actually uh, that actualize those recommendations uh, really i don't understand it's like the state we are is the uh, day -day -day some people want nigeria to be or is our golden era because it, it, it's clear enough that what we've been doing is not working it's not just now. It's just that, of course, the, the, the circumstances we have found ourselves are kind of amplified the fault lines of what have been there all along. And because some of the things have been done with reckless abandon, so they, they've drummed up attention. For those who were not aware before, everybody is now aware. And that, that's why it's creating more agitation. But the basic fundamentals are just not there. Let, let's look at it from the point of uh, the development studies. What we are passing through in development studies is what we call transition crisis. Because if you don't pay the price initially, you will pay the price eventually. That's what we are going through. And it's now, it's now an opportunity for us to manage this transition crisis and transit into becoming a modern, new Nigerian nation. Like most nations have passed through this phase before, in different ways, some were more subtle than ours. Because perhaps they learned their lessons very quickly, 
and they didn't wait until they got to this kind of crescendo, this kind of brink, before they, they, were, they made their changes. But it's okay. It's just for us also to, to recognize that this, what appears to be an adversity, is actually an opportunity for us to craft a new nation, okay, to put fundamental things that make nations to work in place. Let me give you the, you know, the, there is a book called Why Nations Fail by uh, Achimoglu and uh, Robinson. What they, what they did was to make an argument, which I agree with them. And they used the example of the Nohalis. The Nohalis are found in Mexico. They are also found across the Mexico-American uh, border in uh, Arizona. Now, the Nohalis, the same culture, the same people, the same everything, those in America are living the lifestyle and quality of life available in America. Those in Mexico, the same people, the same everything, they cross like, it's like going from Victoria Line to Ikoi, you know. Mm. That's how they cross, uh, those who are kit and kin, and kin. And those in uh, uh, Mexico are living the third, life, third world uh, standard life. What is different is the system. I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've been preaching this for a while. That what makes nations that work and that succeed to work is the system they craft for themselves. I call it the system of systems, where you have strong institutions, you have policies, strategies, you have structures, you have processes and procedures, checklists, routines and drills for doing everything. That's how nations that work. General, That's how the, you say America is a nation of laws. General, we have been in democracy for 22 years running. Hmm. And uh, the advocacy for restructuring is getting louder hmm. than ever. We have also held uh, what do you call it? Uh, two conferences that Nigerians were so hopeful would transit into actualizing restructuring. But they never did. Again, in your view and by your experiences engaging your advocacy for restructuring, whose duty? between the executive and the legislature is paramountly to restructure Nigeria? Mm, very good question. Uh, and I, I've been an advocate of an all-stakeholders approach to solving national problems. Again, that's part of what we have not put in place. We have not put a framework that allows us to tap and harness our collective best, human resource-wise, in solving any national problem. So, I mean, strictly speaking, I would say it's everybody's duty. But of course, we can allocate duty based on the, the statutory rule of each arm. But they don't have rules to play. Okay? I mean, we know that in our... Because I heard the president saying that mm. to the, to the Nigel Dayton's leaders that visited him that mm. if the National Assembly expedite actions on restructuring true bill and it gets to him, I'll we'll sign it. it. Yeah. So... That's why I said, whose duty? Yes. Now, well, you know, we are restructuring becomes a little too creepy and tricky. <laughs> it's because, don't forget that those who are in power right now came on the platform of the current status quo. Okay? Now, so telling them to change it, their first concern, I mean, the, the elite class, the political class, they don't want to commit self-suicide. Not that they don't want to do, take any step, abnegating uh, step. Uh, so you must recognize that. Now, it is left to the people to put enough pressure to make them, to make it no, no longer negotiable, no longer you know, vol voluntary for them to do what the people want. In democracies, I mean, we say the, the majority will have its way, the minority will have its say. Okay? The, the, the leaders we appointed or we, we elected, are supposed to do what the people want. Exactly, okay? because they're uh -huh. supposed to revert to the people. Uh -huh. So, they are good. And if we already have a 74 and above consensus from the people, what else? But again, that, that self-interest, enlightened self-interest, will, will certainly be a caution on them. But again, like I said, it is left for the people to push sufficiently to that point where they can no longer say no, or they can no longer delay with any tactics at all. You know, it, it, that's why everybody must come on board in thank this you, push. Thank mm. you very much, General, for having you on this. Now, what is your last message to Nigeria? 
Hmm. Thank you very much. I, I want to say to Nigerians that uh, while the state of the nation is not necessarily the best that we would desire, we must see beyond it. We must see it as ample opportunities for us to set the necessary foundation, craft a new nation, build, put in place the, the fundamentals that will help us to build a nation. You see, we cannot continue to do what makes for failure and be expecting success. There are known ways and means by which nations have grown. We are not going to be an exception. Okay, so we have come to a, a critical point, a, a, a redefining moment for the nation. And what behoves all of us is to rise do and you come on Do board. you love the name Nigeria? Do you want us to change the name Nigeria? I'm asking. Because many people have talked about that. Uh, name, you know, we Africans, we are the ones who have all these kind of superficial so you know ideas that name doesn't it's not name that determines what, what the very much general <laughs> Harry Ayola. we have been talking to general Harry Ayola, a man who has paid his own due in nation building and you can see no one would have tackled it more eloquently as you have done and we are very very happy to have gotten you here today and we hope that when we have opportunity of beckoning on you again you will make yourself available unto us Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, yes. viewers. Thank you. Don't go away. The second segment will be coming almost immediately. We're still on nationalism and you on your darling station, ITV, independent television. And you know, certainly, we are the best. And uh, don't change that channel.